So how do you balance aesthetics and functionality when incorporating steel elements into a design? So steel to begin with, I mean it's a longer question to begin with, uh, to answer very easily. Uh, steel has always been, as of now, even what we talk about today in today's summit, uh, primarily is a very engineering domain uh, uh, material, so to speak. But at the same time, uh, there have been exemplary examples in the history and that's where we learn more of how to mold steel because it's one of the best thing about steel that's uh, that one can it's malleable one can make use of it and uh, in terms of objectively looking at any form one has to look at steel as as a part of aiding process of the aesthetic itself and not something which you try to cover up later so we try to keep a balance in both yes where wherever it's required to uh, keep a, a different finish in order to not have always a very colder material because steel has a very colder feel to it but at the same time, we try to balance it out uh, wherever, truthfully, we can show materials in form of steel or in form of any other uh, cladding, etc. where required. So, can you share some examples of projects designed by you where steel was used creatively to enhance the architectural aspects? Uh, creatively, it's in terms of engineering aspect, definitely, because we actually are a design consortium. We are not just architects, but we are also a design consortium being we have a team of structural engineer, mechanical, electrical. So we tend to work on the parts, let's say for example, uh, one building that we did for Alembic uh, Pharma and uh, this is near Baroda. And here the composition was between two things, uh, between steel structure in terms of PEB, but also the, the, she, uh, the slab area etc. was uh, taken care of uh, in terms of deck sheets etc. which was part of civil. So it's mostly composition, time optimization is where it helps the most. Uh, other than that, one of it uh, is going to be ABPCL, which is Aditya Billa Power Composer Limited, where we have used steel in, in the best possible way that we can. Uh, I mean, to begin with, but words don't do the justice to it to begin with, but yeah. So how do you ensure that the steel components align with the overall design intent and architectural style? Steel component again uh, depends on what your overall approach was. If your approach from the beginning was about incorporating steel as a as an added element in the end, then it's not going to ever come out to be truthfully good. So it has to be an integration from the beginning. So from the beginning of the process, we try that if at all there is a holistic approach towards design, whether it's a composite structure, whether it's a completely steel structure, then one has to keep in mind that that one has to stay truthful about it in terms of presenting it to the client all the way till the end so that you are sure about what you're presenting and the outcome is not a surprise for most of us so how do you, how do you collaborate with engineers to ensure the structural integrity of steel elements in your designs in in your design uh, see, as I said, we are a design consortium, so uh, we tend to have internal uh, debates, discussion, disagreements itself to begin with, uh, because yes, uh, architecture and engineering to begin with, these are uh, at the bedrock of everything together, uh, of the entire industry, but at the same time, they have to best examples come out when they work together. So. If anything, we have always seen that whenever there is a collaboration rather than working against each other and finding a domain of who is winning this, whether it's a structure designer or an architect, that's never, I think everyone's working for the same thing. So whenever the collaboration has happened, and that's where the consortium comes to help, is that it, it gives a good process flow for the pro project. And if the process is good, I'm sure the end product is good as well. Uh, I think uh, one thing that uh, is has been, I don't want to say it's a buzzword now, but it's important to begin with and has been since always. Only thing is since last two decades, everyone, every nation is taking it a bit seriously in terms of uh, taking carbon emissions and your carbon footprint that you're leaving behind in the building. Hence, uh, a lot of people try to reuse 
lot of people don't even always go for necessarily virgin steel etc these are the choices one has to make of how one can also there are adaptive reuse projects in europe america have been there always but now they are slowly moving towards india where one does not need to build always new but also adapt what is there in order to be as uh, you know as frugal if i may say uh, when using newer materials thus one ensures that at the same time i am not saying one has to be always looking for adaptive reuse projects but uh, the future holds a lot of uh, innovation in terms of steel which can be produced and reproduced to begin with from raw materials which are not starting right from scratch and thus i think that becomes a very key portion that's one of the thing that steel also is now not, not just part of architecture but also the interiors it has started creeping in where we sit where we you know so it's it's everywhere and the quantum might be lesser so to speak but there have been innovations in terms of uh, low carbon uh, emission or low carbon footprint uh, products so most architects are going for it most engineers are going for it but it has to be a hand in hand process where everyone collectively looks at it and hopefully in another 10 years we go to the point where this planet becomes a bit more breathable